In this presentation, we'll delve deeper into examining magnetic forces acting on currents. Building upon our prior discussion, we'll apply the principles we explored earlier regarding the calculation of magnetic interactions within various conductors carrying electrical currents. We must revisit and retain all that we've studied so far. Recall what occurs when a conductor carries an electric current. How to compute the total magnetic force vector using the integral method. In scenarios where the magnetic field remains constant and the conductor is linear, we can simplify the expression significantly. It no longer remains an integral, but emerges directly from the vector product of the length vectors and the magnetic field, scalarly multiplied by the current. If the conductor forms a closed circuit, resulting in a coil, be it a square loop or any other shape, provided it's a closed circuit, the sum of all contributions yields a total force of zero. We derive the magnetic moment by multiplying the current with the loop's surface vector and subsequently obtain the moment resulting from forces acting on the loop, calculated from the magnetic moment and the magnetic field. Let's initiate our analysis by applying these concepts to our first problem. The first problem states that Jay is aware that the intensity of the Earth's magnetic field at the equator measures 4 times 10 to the power of minus 5 teslas. It can be assumed to align parallel to the Earth's surface in the south-north direction. In proximity to where he lives, there exists a 2 meter long power line with a current of 150 amperes flowing in the east-west direction. Help Jota in calculating the force exerted by the Earth's magnetic field on the wire. Given that we're positioned at a point on the equator, let's concentrate on this geographical location as specified in the statement. Let's consider the orientation of the magnetic field, as mentioned in the statement, along with the alignment of the power line and the current running from east to west, as indicated. Indeed, it's a straight rectilinear conductor. It's situated within a constant magnetic field, allowing us to employ the simplification discussed in our theoretical overview within lesson number 9. Here's the scenario. The length of the cable, defined as 2 meters, can be expressed in the orientation from east to west, denoted by the unit vector I as a negative 2. And the magnetic field that goes from south to north upwards, I am going to indicate it by the unit vector J. When computing the magnetic interaction, the vector product simplifies the process significantly. Employing this vector product, the magnetic force vector can be determined promptly, resulting in a magnetic force of negative 12 times 10 to the power of minus 3 along the unit vector K. But bear in mind, it's negative in newtons. Now, let's proceed to a second scenario. Here, Jota encounters the effects of a magnetic field on a circular platform that isn't fixed to the ground and can move in any direction. Along the edge of this platform, a current of intensity I can rotate. I aim to determine the impact of a magnetic field with a magnitude of B sub zero and a unit vector direction I on the loop while a current flows along its periphery. Here. The diagram indicates the representation of the magnetic field, with the current circulating around the surface where Jota is positioned. Let's explore the potential outcomes of this setup. Right, to compute the impact of the magnetic field, I need to consider the effects on the surface due to the loop's magnetic moment. How are we going to calculate this moment? It's the product of the current with the surface vector. In the case of a circular loop, the surface area forms a circle. This area is represented by pi squared. And what about its direction? It aligns with the current's rotation, indicated by the unit vector k, pointing upwards. Let's not forget the senses, which are very important. How am I going to calculate from this magnetic moment the resultant moment due to the forces applied on the loop? It is given by the product of the magnetic moment and the magnetic field vector. What's the result? It's revealed as the momentum of the forces negative current times pi squared times b sub zero all along the unit vector j. What's the implication? It means that due to this unit of current, the loop will begin to rotate. In what direction will it rotate? Let's examine the direction of rotation. It's in the negative j direction. If it's minus j, it's going to rotate in the negative j direction. That is towards the negative y. If it's the negative y, what's going to happen? The platform is going to produce a twist, and what is going to happen to J? Joda is going to fall down. Let's proceed with the next problem. 
I'm given information that a specific region in space experiences a uniform magnetic field with a magnitude b and direction along the j unit vector. We aim to understand the impact generated by this magnetic field on a triangular spiral through which a current I passes, as depicted in this figure. To explore this, we'll compute the magnetic forces acting on the sides of the loop, determine the loop's magnetic moment, and the resulting moment generated by the forces acting on the loop. All right, let's begin to analyze everything that we have been analyzing in the theory part. Considering these are straight conductors, as depicted in the diagram, I can apply the simplification. The resulting expressions for the forces acting on segment A, segment C, and segment B yield these specific outcomes. It's crucial to consider the vector expressions of A, B, and C for a comprehensive understanding of these forces and their corresponding vectors. Let's examine segment C closely. What happens there? Why is there no force acting on C? It's logical. The vectors representing C and B are parallel. With parallel vectors, the sign of the angle between them becomes zero, resulting in no magnetic contribution. I calculate the magnetic moment of the loop as previously done. Naturally, the magnitude of the surface is determined by half of the base multiplied by the height. If it's half the base times the height, taking into account the base C, the height B, and considering the sense as negative I along the unit vector I, I obtain the magnetic moment. What about the moment resulting from the forces acting on the spiral? Well, just as before, we use the following. The moment resulting from the forces is obtained by multiplying the magnetic moment with the field vector. The magnetic moment yields a result that indicates a magnitude of one half of the current multiplied by C times B and times the field's magnitude in the negative K direction. It rotates according to this direction and sense. It's rotating in the negative Z axis direction of the vector. Therefore, if I observe the movement of my triangle over various time intervals from its initial position, it is going to be rotating in this direction. Very well. We've effectively applied known expressions and principles to calculate magnetic interactions on straight rectilinear conductors and understand the peculiar features of loops. Our exploration of the magnetic field will continue in the upcoming lessons. Thank you.